Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Simon, and this is Emily, and we're from uh, Mosero Bass, which uh, sits within the uh, wonderfully diverse urban neighbourhood of Borsal Heath in Birmingham. Um, so over the next 10, 15 minutes or so, we're going to talk to you about this magnificent building uh, and the different ways we've looked at engaging with audiences um, through uh, different ways of programming, uh, all with the, the main aim of improving people's uh, mental and physical well-being. Um, so Mesero Bass and Bortle Heath Library, uh, which the project we're just in the middle of, um, combines the two buildings. It sits at the heart of Birmingham uh, and we're at the start of this major capital development project. So over the next seven years, the aim is to put swimming, health and well-being uh, at the heart of this coalition-led uh, project. So to just put a bit of context into what, what is Mosero Baths. Um, so it's a grade two star uh, listed Edwardian swimming baths within Borsal Heath, Birmingham. And part of its historic significance is that it was originally designed and segregated by gender and class. So there's a first class, men's first class, men's second class and women's doors. And the building's been very much designed with that uh, in mind. Um, so there's a number of... It's, it's quite significant in the fact that a lot of the heritage is still intact as you walk through it. It's very much a living memory of that original design uh, and boasting a, a, a grand gala pool, a second class pool, uh, as well as 46 individual slipper baths uh, and a laundry which has, I believe, one of the only surviving steam heated drying racks uh, still in place. So it's had quite a plotted sort of history, uh, as many historic baths have up and down the country. Um, in 2013, um, Birmingham City Council, who owned the building, um, decided that they couldn't run the building anymore and were going to shut it um, with its high sort of maintenance and operational costs uh, at play. Um, this resulted in a, a big fund, um, a campaign from the community to save the baths. Um, and this thought then led to the forming of the uh, measure of us CIO, who are the current operators. Um, and then they brought in a coalition of heritage sector organisations, such as the National Trust, uh, Historic England, World Monuments Fund, uh, the Friends of Mosey Road Bass and Birmingham City Council alongside them. Um, so from, uh, from this, uh, a number of successful funding campaigns have came about. So funding from National Ossuary Community Fund in 2020 um, uh, to start wellbeing activities and piloting around wellbeing act activities. Um, and then in 2021, we're um, fortunate to have funding from Department for Leveling Up. And then in 2022, from the National Lottery Heritage Fund. Fabulous. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Um, so we received reaching community funding in 2020 to create a vision, um, which is a vibrant and eclectic civic space for the 21st century. So the program, what we did was to support swimming activities um, and develop well-being community and pop up cultural activities and events through the whole building. So also in the empty swimming pool as well. So the programme that we created mainly, that's okay, mainly had four aims. Um, the benefiting people have improved physical and emotional well-being. People experience decreased social isolation. There's an increase of skills, confidence and employability for local residents. And also people have improved perceptions of community and place. So what did we do? Hello. We talked to many people. We listened and developed programming based on what we heard. What I found is that a lot of people wanted to make things together uh, and then take it home with them to do also at home. So what we did is we programmed family, arts and crafts, floristry, places of welcome, knit and natters and jewellery and splash. You would make a little bracelet and then go for a swim. Hopefully not all together with the bracelet as well. For floristry, uh, here's an example here, but floristry had a full waiting list every single week. People would come in, uh, make a flower arrangement and take it home. Um, and we wish we could have put on more floristry classes actually. Um, with floristry, what happened, so we programmed it just after the pandemic. Um, and uh, some people who didn't want to come outside the house because of 
what happened in the pandemic. Floristry in particular was one where they felt comfortable to come in. Maybe you could be with your own craft, your own flowers, and then go. One lady in particular who wanted me to say, she, um, her mum died in the pandemic and she struggled with that grief. And so to be able to come out of her house and also visit her mum's grave, she would come and make some flowers and then go to the grave to respect her mum. So that's our floristry sessions. So we also had the physical and sports, so as well as the swimming, as mentioned, we put on Tai Chi classes, uh, women's only capoeira, which was co-created with the local community and something they really wanted to do in the space, in the empty swimming pool, and also disco tech. So I know we've got silent disco here, but we also had disco tech in our empty swimming pool. And uh, we did have a lot of comments like, I hate exercise, but I'll dance with all of you here. So we were trying to see how we could make exercise go beyond uh, the norm. Uh, I've got a few quotes here as well, so exercise, and then also very much, this is my time, this is my exercise for the week. Oops, the daisies. Um, and then also into response uh, as well in the pandemic, people who had long COVID and also chronic illnesses really would like a space to come and heal and then also something to go home in their own time and do it their own practice. Um, so we created something called Healing Waves, which was a little bit like Tai Chi, slow movements, but we did it in the water and we also did it um, in the empty swimming pool as well. So we did it in both swimming pools. Um, and very much there was a lady uh, who would come and it was the, she said it was the only thing that healed her from long COVID and she suffered with it for two years. Yeah, in, in addition to, uh, to meditative and self-healing, um, last year we brought one of the slipper baths back into use as part of the pilot. Um, and this is the image that you can see of it here. So uh, this was... Uh, designed with uh, a number of community groups about you know what they would like to see how they would use the, the space and this led to uh, an hour, hour booking so people could make online uh, which all sold out within a number of days which was quite remarkable um, and it was just really a space it was partly you know a, a sort of unique historic experience that people can sort of engage in but also it was actually people just came just to have that you know an hour away from the kids and just sit there and you know away from hustle bustle every day and you know and sort of enjoy being in you know a unique environment beautiful thanks simon um oh no what have i done <coughs> ah brilliant um so then also we programmed educational programs. Um, so we had about 250 ladies who were at our chat and splash session. So the chat and splash session is basically um, people who wanted to learn English and also wanted to learn to swim. So um, they would go into one swimming pool, the empty swimming pool, learn to swim there and then follow up in the swimming pool with water. We also had a young ambassadors program. So for five to 18 year olds, um, they could learn about the building, the history, the heritage, the science, the technology, the arts, everything that was to do with the building. And they had their own response to it and became our young ambassadors in Bulls or Heath and Birmingham. Um, yes, we had something called Little Speakers Club as well. And as I mentioned before, the STEAM activities. Do you want to mention yeah, and then so the, the, the bottom picture here, this this was uh, six individual, young individuals, 18 to 30, that we uh, employed one day a month uh, to look at the um, the archive, the baths, and to interpret in their own way, you know, in a way that represented them and, you know, and, and spoke to them. Uh, and this led to a podcast series, which is, uh, you can stream on Spotify. Um, and it was just an opportunity as well for them to develop some skills and, you know, to make sure that their voice is heard really and that you actually you know when you put interpretation into into buildings that it actually is kind of something that's relevant to them at the same time um so all of this um has been sort of centered around partnerships uh, and at two levels really so there's the the through the coalition of those organizations um connecting both nationally and international uh, international in particular through the world monuments fund uh, we're looking at connecting baths across 
uh, the globe. So um, we've uh, just started a partnership with a, a bathhouse in Japan, looking at bathing culture and, and what well-being means between the two cultures. Um, and then on a local and sort of hyper local level through the, the community groups and uh, the activities that Emily's been speaking about. Lovely. Um, yes, yeah, so we co-created with lots of local people and what we created was an archery session, um, a capoeira session that I mentioned earlier. And then last year, it was completely community-led. It was an Eid where we had over 250 people come and an IFTA to break the fast. Um, but as well, what we noticed is um, when people coming to an activity, then it, it would, they would come for one activity, see what else was on in the whole building, and they become multi-participants. And then from there, we said, what aren't we doing? There's, we can always improve. What are we not doing? And um, if they were passionate about something, we had a program to... Um, which was uh, they could become their own group leader. So we had a bridge to facilitation program, which made a whole journey. And in fact, quite a lot of people from uh, that was socially prescribed to us went through that whole journey and became their own leader uh, in the building. We had uh, a bit of bigger partnerships with Sport Birmingham and then also the Zinnia Centre. I don't know if anyone knows the Zinnia Centre. It's um, they run, uh, they help with mental health services. And we also had um, uh, people coming from the Zinnia Health Centre to all of the services we were providing. Um, we also realised it wasn't just us in Balls or Heath, Birmingham that were doing lots of things. Balls or Heath is full of uh, wonderful organisations doing so much for wellbeing. So we realised we needed to make sure there was a wellbeing network set up. So we set up a network where organisations could come together and talk about what they were doing so that we could signpost to all other organisations. So we had a sort of area mapping uh, in the neighbourhood. So we did talk about social prescribing, uh, which is wonderful, but we did have a few barriers with social prescribing. Um, not understanding the numbers that were coming through the door. So we weren't quite sure how many, like definitely how many people we were hitting, how we could improve from that. Um, we found it quite hard to track. Um, and that's what we want to look at is how could we track those numbers to make sure we're always um, improving and identifying why and when social prescribers have come in through our doors. Fabulous. Yeah, so and that's sort of led to um, this future design of the bass that's very much been led by people and the people who've engaged and, you know, and people who are to engage in the future, um, connecting it to the, the neighbouring library. Um, so there will be spaces for a variety of activities, swimming, uh, event space, um, a wellbeing hub at the front of the building, uh, which will bring the slipper bass back. Um, and a community garden to the rear and hopefully creating a, a very inclusive space that is you know is for everyone that's for the community it has grassroots in mind but also has that kind of that national international aspirations as well <laughs>